I get up this morning at 3.50, I've done a gym session, yeah. I put on a lovely suit, got picked up by a private car, worked the trip to the airport, worked here, went to Newcastle Dream Apartments, on the way up signed an amazing mentor client. Do you think I've got time to spend wanting to worry about what somebody wants to say about me? No. Not a chance. <laughs> no. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. What's up, Wanderers, and welcome to the Beat the Scroll podcast. I'm your host, Chloe Clover, and this is the Content Creators Podcast, where we talk about all things to do with marketing, all things to do with content creation, all things to do with entrepreneurialism, anything that makes you feel creative and give you a buzz, we want to talk about it. Um, and today, today was the most northernest I've ever said day in my life. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, today, we're with um, the man, the myth, the legend that is Tom Smith. What's happening, kid? Hey, I'm so happy that you're here. It makes me feel so good. I'm buzzing, so <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. So you've got, um, to, to anyone out there who doesn't know who Tom is, where have you been? Um, <laughs> no. hmm. uh, Tom's got, he's got a number of things, but the... the the two biggies um, that I heard about before we met was Dream Apartments and Dream Mentoring. Mm. Like they're they're the the ones that most people will have heard you from, right? Apart from the fact that you're like a influencer and whatever. That's really? Pretty yeah. Pretty big. <laughs> but uh, yeah, do you want to tell do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah. Um, so I'm Tom Smith. Um, people call me Tom Smith the Entrepreneur on Instagram. I'm Tom Smith on LinkedIn. I own. A UK service department business. So we are a hotel apartment company in Belfast, Liverpool, Newcastle, Manchester, Middlesbrough. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And Dundee. And we're about to announce an expansion again today. Yeah. Um, I also have an incredible mentor business. I feel privileged to be able to give people advice. Yep. So then they don't make mistakes in life. Well, they don't repeat the same mistakes and they skyrocket and go to a whole new level. So the mentoring program has been life-changing for a lot of people. We're on the Programme 12, which starts tomorrow, the 24th of August. I'm also privileged to be a mindset coach for Molly McCann from UFC. Yep. My mentoring works. I'm not any clever than anybody else, but I've made the mistakes. I know what works. Yep. I've applied it now to a mentoring course. Yeah. So between the hotel business and the mentoring, I also own construction companies where I build apartments and houses. Mm -hmm. And I'm in it to win it every single day. You know, I love work. I absolutely love it. Your 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 energy is like it's it's infectious. Like that's one thing that like um because we because we've known each other for a little while. Yeah. Um Well, in fact, you're you mine and Lou's mentor, which is pretty yeah, special. But these have all became also became my friends. So yeah, that feels really good. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that because I feel that way. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I've got your back. I know you do. I know you do. And I, and I think that makes you so much different uh, to anyone else. Like you. You see a lot of like business coaches out there, mentors. Like it, it, it is, it's something that you see a lot of. But often, um, there's people out there that maybe haven't experienced it. They haven't grown a business. They, yeah. they don't really understand like the struggles that go with. You see, I, that. I I just got goose pimples when you said that because it's so true. There's people across the UK and the world that are mentoring people and they've never opened or closed a business in their lives. They don't know what it feels like to be destroyed by self-doubt or facing adversity because yeah. they've never even run a company. You know, I have been round the block and I know exactly what it feels like. I know what self-doubt's like. I know what it's like to run a hotel business during a global pandemic yeah. where we lost £6 million in weeks in sales. Yeah, it's mad. You know, and we stopped surviving during COVID and started thriving through mm -hmm. COVID. It's all mindset. So if I am coaching my clients, it's from my heart. Yeah. I actually care. Yeah. There's a big difference in just taking somebody's money. And somebody's success is my business card, but I want them to win mm -hmm. all day. You know, that's why I have live WhatsApp groups and I'm adding content. It's my job to inspire and motivate people and some things that people don't know about me, like I pray regularly, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not a Christian, but God has saved my life. And in the mornings, I ask God to help me be an inspiration and motivation to help other people. And, you know, for me, that's a big thing. You said you're not a Christian, but you, but you pray to God. That's really interesting, I think. Is it, is it more like that it's like a higher, like a higher power, do you know, that people talk about the universe, you talk about the universe a lot. Yeah. Do you sort of align that with, with, 
the, with the word God. No, I think God is the universe and the universe is God. You know, I also, just to touch on this quickly, I go to AA, yeah. you know, and I love going to AA. Mm-hmm. You know, if I didn't have God in my life, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. The 12-step program doesn't work. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's about being grateful in life for everything. Even our challenges are something to be grateful for after you beat them. Because yeah. when you look back, they become your strengths. 100%. So, you know, some of the biggest challenges that ever ever happened to me have made me a strong, bulletproof person mm-hmm. with resilience yeah. that I can't actually mentor people and say, don't try this, do that. Yeah. I've been there. This is exactly what to do. And people are like, wow. So that comes from experience. Yeah. And, and I, think, I think another thing um, that I think really sets you apart as well like a a part of your story that I just find like uh, so inspirational kind of mind-blowing really like you you grew up in um in in a war zone right Mm. from Northern Ireland and do you you feel like that has affected your mindset as you've as you've grown you know I think anybody from Northern Ireland special because I'm from Northern Ireland you know, yeah. people call it Ireland, Northern Ireland, depends, you know, what, what you want to say. But, you know, when we, I was born in 1974 in the height of a 30-odd year struggle of complete massacre and terrorism at, at its highest level. You know, communities were controlled by different factions. And yeah. my mum and dad, who I'm very lucky that are still alive, they're both 70 years old, we used to watch the news in the morning. Now, I don't watch the news and haven't for seven years. Yeah. But as... Adults, my mum and dad and parents watched the news because we used it as a sat nav. Mm-hmm. Because we would have, my mum and dad would have listened to the news to realise where was somebody killed that day? Where was the bomb went off? Yeah. So then we would have used that news to actually decide how we went to school or how we went That's to work. Mad. You see, our abnormal life was just normal. Yeah. It became normal. You know, somebody, unfortunately, somebody dying, a bomb going off or a gun attack was just the normal life in Northern Ireland. So, did you f- recognise that at the time? Like, did you did you recognise that that wasn't normal? No, because I was a child that grew up on it, yeah. so it just seemed normal. Yeah. You know, like I remember one time walking out on the main street in Belfast. By uh, it was a mistake, my friend and I, and the policeman seen us, grabbed us and ran down the street. And as he ran down the street, there was a bomb went off in the background because wow. bomb scares and bombs going off in Belfast was a real regular thing. And then as I started growing up in the Troubles, as a young contractor, I remember one time working on a police station and the policeman come running out and says, get off the roof. And we're like, what's wrong? And we come down and, and I said, what's wrong? And he says, we've had intelligence. There's a sniper in the forest oh. and you were all about to get shot off the roof. So what did we do? We had our lunch and then get back on the roof. What? That's that was nice. just Northern Ireland. So, you know, people that grew up in the Troubles are very resilient. Yeah. I'm from Belfast. Resilience is in my DNA. Yeah. So, you know, I'm so proud of our country, but and I'm so proud of the community leaders because now we have peace yeah. that I never ever seen as a child would ever happen. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot to be said by the amazing work our community leaders have done. Do you think that that's why um, you've got that, that resilience, that focus, that determination, that ambition even because you've gone through that? Like, is that, do you feel like that's really shaped your future? Definitely had an effect on me. There's, there's no doubt about it. But you have to turn it into a positive effect. Mm-hmm. Even growing up, I grew up in a house full of love, but we had no money. Yeah. You know, I worked in a fish and chip shop from when I was 10 years old. And I can remember in the heart of the winter, it was freezing cold. And I was in this, like, back shed in this big fish and chip shop. And it was so cold, the, the baths out the back. Now, I'm talking a bath that you would actually have a bath in. Yeah. were froze, and I had to smash the water. And then I used to put buckets of chips into these. But I used to stand in a bucket of hot water, yeah. shivering. But at the age of 10 years old, I started getting paid £10 a week. Yeah. And I realised, with money, I had a choice. Mm-hmm. You know, money gave me a bit of power. And sometimes I would have looked simply at my money box and realised, I put that money there. So the, the clothes that my friends were all getting... From catalogues, like Kay's catalogue, you probably don't remember yeah, things I like that. I have no idea. No. I was able at 10 years old to save up and buy my own pair of football boots. Yeah. My mummy and daddy gave me the most amazing life. But sometimes I'd put my, my own tracksuit on my own back and my own football boots too. So. Yeah. No, I, 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 can, I can definitely relate. Um, our life changed 
uh, a few times as we as we were growing up, but there was a long period where um, my mum was uh, she was a single working mum, so she wow. yeah she she didn't have benefits. It was her and three kids, and she's a warrior then. She is absolutely. I, I come from strong female blood, hundred percent. My mum's incredible. We had my grandma, but obviously she was um, she was older as well and she was in retirement mm-hmm. and whatever and she was a single person and mm-hmm. um, my grandma actually brought my mum and my brother up um so when she she just had my mum she just met the love of her life got wow. pregnant yeah um had my mum and then straight away just they decided they wanted another child okay. so she was my mum's a toddler pregnant with my uncle and uh my granddad 37 heart attack Wow. Died. She found him. She was pregnant. Little baby finds him dead. Heart attack, and then g- brought those two up. So yeah, like, and always worked as well. She was an artist and like, like incredible woman, incredible family. But yeah, yeah m- my mom. She uh, there was times when she would buy, she would save up, and she would buy a pack of penguins. Yeah, and that was our treat. Of course, that was our treat. And yeah. it, she was seeing this guy one time, and he came in, and he sat and ate the full pack of penguins. And that when she just sat and watched him thinking, that like, that's my kids' yeah, one treat them. for the week. So yeah, I can definitely relate to um, seeing that. It doesn't matter how much love is in that family. Sometimes there's things that that aren't there and can't be provided for. But that mm. in itself gives you that resilience to come get it. I, I can even remember sometimes driving home and being in the car with my mum and dad as a kid. And there was a chip shop that we used to drive past, and it was like the best chip shop in Belfast. Yeah. But we only would have stopped at it every now and again because it was a treat. Yeah. We couldn't afford to have it all the time. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, like like my wife too, her family too, like the sausage would have been caught up in them maybe four or five bits, and the family would have been sharing yeah. it. Yeah. You know, and my little girl, Farah, who I love with my every part of my body, and my other daughter, Rihanna. I remember Farah one time broke her phone. Yeah. And I'd say it to her, give me a pen and paper. And she says, what's it for, Dad? And I drew a 50 and circled it. And I said, your daddy would have had to work 50 weeks to fix that phone. She says, what, Dad? I said, it's 500 quid to fix your iPhone. And when daddy was 10, he'd have had to work 50 weeks. And she went, wow, daddy. But it was just to put it in the... You know, yeah. perspe- you know that re- this is what was happening back right. in the day. And it's for, for kids to really understand nowadays. We did have a tough, but it was like me and you both know, it was the making of you as a person. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. I am, I, I'm, I guess I'm like, I'm, I'm really curious about like, uh, you, you've got a really strong personal brand. Like, and, and I, said it, the, I yeah. said it at the start, right? I was like, you are, you, you're in, you're an influencer people like look up to you you've got a really cool following you do these incredible things um at what point did that did that start happening for you when did you like focus your attention on hold on a minute like this this social media can really work for me yeah and you know I need to be frank with everybody you know I never thought it was ever going to be my thing yeah and so many people believe this you know stay under the radar and you know you'll get by in life and and it wasn't about that I had that that gremlin thinking on in my head that I never really wanted to put my face on social media. This isn't for me. Mm-hmm. And a weakness that was stirring me in the face, I just went, I'm not having you in my life anymore. I'm turning this into a strength. Yeah. And it's three years this September was the first time I ever went on the social media. Is it really? Now, that was on LinkedIn. And I was on LinkedIn for a couple of years. And it sort of went crazy. Yeah. And Instagram, I think I'm only on over a year odd now. Um, it's grown really fast yeah well. and the thing about it is I just be real I like being real with people you know I'm not trying to sell anything it's the facts it's about hard work it's about motivation isn't real it's about having discipline yeah. it's about when you don't want to get out of bed in the morning that's the day to put the work in yeah. and I'm just hoping to put it out there and let other people see, you know see if I can do it you can do it yeah. you know I'm just a normal kid from Belfast you know, I'm 48, I think I feel like I'm 18. Yeah. I'm in it to win it every single day. And social media has become a huge weapon for me that works brilliantly. I'm helping loads of people. It's bringing me loads of business. Yeah. Yeah. And I now adore it, whereas before <laughs> yeah. it actually scared me. I never in my life would have thought it was going to be on Instagram. And now I'm on Instagram, TikTok, TikTok every yeah. single day. <laughs> yeah. you know? And yeah. it's, it's lovely too when somebody in the street, like one of my last podcasts... I said in the podcast, 
I'm putting stuff out there to help the taxi driver or the kid that's going to school. Yeah. And a guy beeped the horn the other day and says, I'm that taxi driver. Thank you so much. And I'm like, no problem. <laughs> Just the thought of helping and touching that one person yeah. means everything to me. Yeah, that's And see haters, slide on. <laughs> yeah. Do you get a lot of hate on social? I don't look at it. Yeah. You know, I just, I couldn't understand, especially after growing up in Northern Ireland, how people could be hating on each other. Mm-hmm. Why not inspire somebody? Say, see you guys at Wonder Films, you're amazing. Why not say that? Yeah, 100%. You know, and it's usually jealousy, you know. So I paid no attention. I'm too busy mm-hmm. being happy and being successful and loving my wife and kids to even think about somebody wanting to say a negative thing. What do you yeah. think gives people the... Um, so you, you just said it, in fact, you just said it there, actually, that you think that it stems from, like, jealousy when people are uh, putting hate on, on content online. Because that is that is something that stops people, like, actually mm. sharing and, and going on social, the, the fear of what people will think, right? Like, what? how do you, like... The you opinion of sheep does not matter to a wolf. <laughs> yeah. So all these little people saying mad stuff, crack on, slide on down the road. You know, people that live and watch Carnation Street and EastEnders live in drama world. I just live in success world. I just want to keep going, pushing, being more successful, inspiring people, living the life of my wildest dreams. If somebody wants to have a crack at me on social media, yeah. feel free to do it. You know, Grant Cardone says, the more haters you're getting, the better you're doing. And recently, I don't care if you don't mind me saying this, mm-hmm. you have had a few because you're yeah. killing it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, bring it on. Yeah. It is what it is. It is, it is. It, it's hard. I think it, it is. It's like trying to... It's a difficult thing to try and um, separate the two and to, to sort of understand where that comes from and not to actually let it in. Because I think that we... As a company, Lou and I, me as an individual, I just want to get on with everyone. I know, but that's not the world we live in, you see. And you know something, I also respect if somebody wants to hate on me, that's their opinion too. Yeah. And I have to respect it to a certain extent. But do I buy into it for a millisecond? No. Yeah. It's just, you know, like my staff know not even to tell me anymore. I don't want to know. I just want to put content out there. You know, I get up this morning at 3.50. I've done a gym session. Yep. I put on a lovely suit, got picked up by a private car, worked the trip to the airport, worked here, went to Newcastle Dream Apartments. On the way up, signed an amazing mentor client. Do you think I've got time to spend wanting to worry about what somebody wants to say about me? No. Not a chance. <laughs> no. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. So it's it's mad as well, like because um, you've just it's something that we've talked about a lot and and something that we've worked on a lot and, and it is it's like uh, changing changing your mindset, changing mm. your routine. Uh, Lou and I have talked to you so much about nailing that routine and, and gaining more time in the morning. More but you know the thing that I really noticed the shift. Like, I've been mentoring you guys, really, I'm very lucky to have done it. We're coming up to the end of the 16 weeks. But over the last couple of weeks, I've seen a huge shift. We usually have both realised, hold on a minute. (laughs) Him telling us to do these daily rituals really work. And now you are fully on board doing it. But you're also seeing the benefits of the early mornings, time with each other, the health side by going to the gym, writing goals that keep you accountable on your path of success. Mm -hmm. And now you're actually living proof sitting there. It works. 100% 100% it does I, and I was I'm not gonna right Tom if I can be brutally honest with you I was really freaking skeptical like of course you see a lot of like the 5am club right you see yeah. there's so many people saying like getting up early it changes your life all of this stuff and to be a successful entrepreneur you have to do this and you have to do that and it's like when someone tells me if I have to do something it you makes me do the opposite yeah, it yeah. Makes me be I know that by your vibe yeah. Yeah, like yeah. no way but like I can, I understood. Like there was a lot. I think there was. It makes a lot of sense. One of the things that we talked about was struggling with a lot was that we we felt like we didn't have time. Yeah. And and you were just like going, girls, you do not have time. Make more time. How do yeah. you make more time? Yeah. Get the fuck up. <laughs> like, yeah, get course. up earlier. That gives you like three hours on top of everybody else's day. Yeah. Like and it's instead of like. Uh, well, I, I, get, I get up at 4 a.m. six days a week. 
Yeah, you do. Which puts me... I mean, that's even... Puts me a month ahead of anybody else that gets up at 7am. Yeah. So how could they even try and compete with me when I'm already a month ahead of them before they wake up? Yeah. I'm a month ahead of them every year. So if you add that up, like, I'm just killing it (laughs) against a normal person. But it changes everything. For me, the 4am thing, I didn't wake up that person. Mm -hmm. I built that person. Yeah. So anybody, oh my God, he gets up at 4 a.m. Yeah, but I've done it consecutively where it's been 6, 5.30, 5. Yeah. And then when I started doing 5 a.m., I realized if I had that extra hour, it'll change everything. Yeah. And it did. Yeah. Now I get up at 4 o'clock. Sometimes I hate it, but with it, I'll have a triple espresso, which is like a hand grenade going off. <laughs> yeah. I'll have a vitamin C with alkaline water. Yeah. And then I'm in the zone and I'll write my mantra, mm-hmm. a page of bulletproof who I am, and that's me ready to rock. Then I'll write my gratitude for everything I'm thankful for. And I'm talking, I'm not talking about Lamborghinis. I'm talking about the taste of a cup of coffee, yeah. the memories of my grandmother, you know, the, 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 the smile on my wife's face, mm-hmm. my sober ratty. Yeah. And then it's goal time. And I'll write my goals like my life dep- depends on it. I'll play the movie in my head, getting excited. And there's times my wife will say to me, Will you shouting again? Because there's times when I'm writing my goals, I'm like, yes! Because I'm actually living them goals as I'm writing them. Yeah. This works. It does. It this does works. 100%. I'm, a, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not too big to say that it has, it works, and it did change my life. It sounds like I'm doing like a Tom Smith pitch. No, but you, you, I could feel that you were sceptical over yeah. some of the weeks, and now like you are living proof in Teesside, and I'm, I'm so honoured to, to have coached the two of you, especially Alan noticed recently the shift in the two of you, you were, you're so in the zone. Yeah. But the secret to this is now to be left with a universal toolbox to apply for the rest of your life mm-hmm. and for you to inspire your team. Don't tap out of it. Yeah. Stay consecutively in it. 100%. It, it's, it, and it is, it's just that time. I think we didn't realise that we didn't have time to focus on ourselves. It was... So how can you... You can't grow unless you, you're watering the seeds, right? So, like, mm. we we were just just in the grind, we're in the daily grind. And we thought that because we, we had ambition and because we knew that we wanted to grow, that that was enough. No. We have to grow ourselves, and that's our time yeah, now Yeah, and, do you know, that. the sentence I love saying to everybody is get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, if, if you feel uncomfortable getting up early, welcome to the real world. <laughs> yeah. If you feel uncomfortable going through adversity, get used to it. Yeah. You want your business to have problems, I call them challenges, on a daily basis, because if you've got challenges to overcome, you're growing. Yeah. If everything's just coasting, you're not, you're not tra- trading hard enough, you're not trying hard enough, you're not pushing, you're not expanding. You know, one of the things I said to you earlier on, I want you to be calling me complaining. We're trying to get a permit to go to Dubai, and I'm like, I'll put the phone down, because I want to hear you tell me yeah. about these mad challenges, because yeah. you're working globally. Yeah. It's time, it's go time now. Yeah. It's time to really go for it. You guys aren't a company from Teesside. We've talked about, you're a UK incredible company. You're on a global stage now. Yeah. It's all down to you. The biggest battle for everybody is you against you. Yeah. Wonder big. Films, guys, is going <laughs> global. I'm keeping them accountable. <laughs> it's big, it's big. Yeah. I mean, we've worked with Riot Games and they do League of Legends and Hampton by Hilton and McDonald's. Yeah, we've got like some huge, huge brands. But it is, it's, it's the world is changing and, and we're super hyper aware that you can do anything from anywhere. Course, yeah. And we're like riding that wave of being able to do that. From you wouldn't expect a company like ours to be coming from Teesside, like you said. Change your words and change your world. You wouldn't be expecting, but but, but we're going to shock the world. Yeah. We're here now. You know, yeah. even things that I've, I was thinking about in my head earlier on, like in, in September, I'm going to a film premiere in Marbella. In October, I'm going to Morocco on business and a bit of a holiday. In November, I'm going to Madison Square Gardens yeah. with Molly from UFC. Incredible. But our, our life should be the life of our wildest dreams. Mm-hmm. We should go for gold every day. Yeah. People would say to me, like, where do you get that energy from? Why would I not have that energy? Yeah. I want to give my kids legacy wealth. I don't want to repeat the past of me growing up in a poor state, mm. even though it was full of love. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So it's just in it to win it, whatever it takes. And that's, that's what I'm all about. What advice would you give to someone who's like uh, wanting to start growing their business, their personal brand, no, but there's, there's a barrier there to entry. Like, What's the barrier? <laughs> okay, like if I'm, 
I suppose it would be confidence, I think. I think that's the biggest barrier for people when they're going to post on social. They don't feel like what they are saying has value, that people won't listen and that people will take the piss. Yeah, you know, the thing about socials is, hopefully you agree with this, but starting off when somebody's building a brand, any content's good content. Absolutely. You're never going to be Steven Spielberg. You know, it's about getting stuff out there. It's about getting yourself noticed. Mm -hmm. Omnipresence. The only person that can be everywhere at once is God. But in the social media world, we should all have a go at being everywhere at once. Yeah. You have to push back past the confidence barrier. Mm -hmm. And for me, how I done it was, I'm like, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. So I just turned the camera on a building and talked over the camera and was telling everybody, this is our brand new building in Liverpool, blah, yeah. blah, blah. You know, and then I went the following week, phone turned it around and went, let's have this. Yes. And done it. And I killed it in the first one. And I was like, yes. Yeah. Now, there's times I'll put a post out and I'll get it in one. There's times it's 31 and you have a giggle. Yeah. You know, my staff hear me going, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it is what it is. But the biggest battle is you against you. Yeah. You have to say to yourself, how bad do I want this? Because if you want it really bad and you want to be successful and you want to give your wife and kids or your partner a life, and a, an amazing life, you have to push past boundaries. Yeah. Don't care about what other people think. Have a goal of what you want to achieve and go for gold. It's so important. Yeah. But lack of confidence, if you've got lack of confidence, you shouldn't go into business. Oh, that's a bold statement. That's true. Yeah, that's a bold statement. Well, how do I walk in and try and do a deal with Wonder Films if I'm like, hi guys, um, yeah, my name's Tom Smith. Sheepish. Yeah. Go in and kill it. You know, you have to be strong personality. This is who I am. And then you're like, oh yeah, we want to sign up for that mentoring guy. I, 100%. I think that um, you... If you don't have confidence and you want to go into business, then they either put the steps in place to, to become more confident, get used to that, or find someone who is. Exactly. And, you know, and, Richard Bronson says, surround yourself with a specialist if you're not that guy. Yeah. But the other thing is too, you know, if you are incredible, do not be your own best kept secret. Yeah. Tell people. Yeah. What's the worst thing that can happen? It doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, cool. Go and get a job then. But don't live your life with regrets of what you could have been. So, definitely. But like, Boom. yeah. <laughs> he did some drop the mic. You've got a book, Tom. Yeah. You've got a book. How does that feel? Yeah, um, I love it. It's called Fearless. It's an antidote to self doubt. Um, I suppose I got my inspiration from being fearless from my mum. Yeah. My mum is the most bulletproof person I've ever met. Like, she is a real strong woman. When you open the book, there's a photograph of a, a gorgeous woman, and it was my grandmother. She died there. Um, she was 95. So that's just a bit about my mum and my granny. But the book is an antidote to self-doubt. It's for people to push past boundaries that are holding themselves back, which is usually themselves. And there's some of the stuff about me growing up in Northern Ireland. It's about resilience. Yeah. But the whole thing is, it's about dream and the core principles. So D is for determination. R is for regeneration. E is for energization. A is for ambition. And M is for motivation. So I cover these principles in the book and everybody that's read it is loving it. So it's available on Amazon. So I strongly recommend it. Yeah. I 100% recommend it as well. I, I recommend people follow you on uh, LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, wherever they can find you because you're an absolute inspiration and you mean a lot to us and I'm totally, totally honoured that you've come to chat to us. Well, I, I got two amazing mentor clients who have became my friends and I love calling in here regardless if I'm in Middlesbrough. I love just walking in to see you guys in the office. So thank you so much for letting me speak to you today on the podcast. It's, and also, um, you did some training with the team today as well, which was equally as special. Do you think, Thank the, you. Do you think this, the team enjoyed it? I think they were a little shocked at first. But then <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, yeah, they were proper, proper in it towards the end. But yeah, yeah you could Yeah, but they engaged brilliant. And we covered a, a accountability, efficiency, mm -hmm. being the best, because we are the best in Wonder Films. We best. don't compete, we dominate. And we also touched on gratitude. Yep. And it was so lo lovely to hear Heather saying, she's so grateful to have her job. And I think a lot of people need to be reminded sometimes how lucky they are to be in a job. And it was lovely to hear her saying that today. So Yeah, she's 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 incredible. We've got an amazing team. You do? And yeah. that felt really special. So thank you for doing that. Totally my pleasure.
Oh, that was so good. Uh, and you're about to fly off to Leeds. So uh, thank you so much, guys. This has been the Beat the Scroll podcast with Tom Smith. Uh, it's been... Boom. Yes, it's been amazing. <laughs> you can um, you can hit that subscribe button. That would be super special. Smash it if you'd like to. Hit the bell notification. Follow the Beat the Scroll podcast on all platforms. You can find us, Wonder Films. Also, we are everywhere. And I guess there's nothing left to say, but I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Bye.